This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Navigating the journey is dedicated to exploring the options and choices in life. Today, August 9, we will explore a journey that no one should ever have had to experience. August 9, 1945, marked a day of triumph and tragedy. The triumph of the war's ending that ushered in the tragedy <laughs> that would become the nuclear age. August 9, 1945, uh, that's Japan time, because mm -hmm. we get this all mixed up. But anyway, yes. it was a busy day in the history of World War II. The United States dropped a nuclear bomb on Japan, devastating the city of Nagasaki. The Soviet Union followed through with an agreement that they made early in the war, and they declared war on Japan. August 8, uh, our time, which was, you know, anyway. Mm -hmm. yes, exactly. August 8, in Washington, President Truman took a step that many Americans hoped <laughs> would mean that uh, we would have peace in this world more. The President signed the United Nations Charter, thus completing the American ratification of the document. In doing so, the United States became the first nation to complete ratification. At that moment, the atomic bomb just blew the hell out of Nagasaki <laughs> and Hiroshima. About 420,000 people died. And, and who knows how many continued to die after that one day. That includes a group of people that most of us don't talk about, and that's the Korean people who had been drafted into the Japanese military and forced to work as Japanese during the war. The mayor of Nagasaki wrote, and I quote, De decades have passed since that day. Now the atomic bomb survivors are advancing into old age, and their memories are fading into the midst of here. The question of how to inform our young people about the horrors of war, the threat of nuclear weapons, and the importance of peace. Therefore, it is a matter of pressing concern. The citizens of Nagasaki pray that this miserable experience will never be repeated on Earth. We also consider it our duty to ensure that the experience is not forgotten, but passed on to future generations. We must tell the story. We must tell it in every generation. Not about winning or losing, but about the catastrophe of the conflict, the devastation of the deaths and destruction, the inescapable suffering of war as well as people who died that day. Some were just living their lives as young people. So now we tell the story. And we tell it here in Hawaii every year since 1991. The Nagasaki Peace Bell is a gift from the people of the city and county of Honolulu, to the city and county of Honolulu, by the survivors of the atomic bombing in Nagasaki. Recognizing that true steps to peace must begin with acknowledgement of harmful actions in the past, survivors in Nagasaki wish to make a gesture of reconciliation to the people of the city and county of Honolulu, which sustained a military attack on December 7. <laughs> Here we have a little replica of the bell, which was given to me by the people of, by the Hibakusha of Nagasaki, because, along with my guests today, we have made sure that the bell has been rung twice a year, every year since 1991. Francis and Val Biglielmo, who have both passed this year, 
worked with the Congress Against Atomic and Hydrogen Bomb Committee in Nagasaki. The Nagasaki Prefixture uh, Members Association, they were the victims of this horrible, horrible condition, and they raised the money to create the statue and make the, the bell. And they gave a bell to every city that the Japanese bombed. And every bell was different, of course. <laughs> but that was their way of acknowledging what they did. And it was through these mutual efforts that a group of people managed to have this beautiful bell here on the grounds of Honolulu Hollis. Mm -hmm. Now we'll get into the, <laughs> the weeds. Of course, you know I'm going to talk about the weeds. Frank Fossey <laughs> did not want anything to do with the bell. Nothing. Because he had been a Marine in the war. And mm -hmm. he, he was still fighting the war. Okay. So the fact that the people of Nagasaki gave us the bell, and they, the people of Hiroshima gave the city a bell. Mm -hmm. He put them in storage. Didn't want anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. nah. So it was Francis and Val working with hundreds of people to get them out of storage and find a place for mm. them. So the temple in Japan, what used to be Japantown, <laughs> said, we'll put it on our property. And so we managed to have the Hiroshima Bell. The, that's the Hiroshima Bell. Mm -hmm. We managed to have some really super people in the city council at the time. And they overrode Fosse's <laughs> upset. So uh, that's why the bell, and, and, the, and at the time, there were no buildings down there. Mm. And the bell was placed in this valley, beautiful valley. Mm -hmm. And Walter Ozawa said that because Nagasaki sits in a valley with the mountains mm. on both sides, <laughs> he thought it was appropriate that it be in this valley. Oh. So. That is the story of the bell. Now, <laughs> my friend, Joanne. <laughs> Joanne Tachibana and I have been together on this bell thing for, since 1991. Joanne was <laughs> at the city for 40 years? 41. Oh my God. <laughs> How you put up with us for 41 years? <laughs> She was in council services, right? Yeah, but off of the city clerk with service of city council, yes. Yeah, so they, she has seen city council come and go. And mayors. And mayors. <laughs> and mayors, <laughs> yes. <laughs> we, we were not going to talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I promised we weren't, we weren't going to talk about we, the mayor. We, this is good. we won't discuss no. that. Uh, so, Joanne, yeah. I talk, 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 talk. Yeah. Tell me about Joanne. Mm. I. I think I know Joanne, and so tell me all about Joanne. <laughs> well, I, I'm, thank you for the opportunity to share our story because um, working together on peace measures, you know, you have been an inspiration to not only me, but the many people you encounter by your example and being, you know, marching with Dr. Martin Luther King. I mean, you know, you're, you're part of our, the history that I've admired. And she does wonderful things for, um, she finds interesting facts. And we have been inspired by all of that, right? But um, I grew up in a very small town on the Big Island. And I was involved with international affairs as a high school student, Pacific Asian Affairs Council, got to college. And then, you know, then after college, you know, and then I became a, Bo a Buddhist. And their philosophy was um, peace culture and education, which really tied into what I believed in. Also that, um, you know, the United Nations is a highly respected organization by people of Hawaii, and I was embraced in that with, with the volunteer group. So I've been volunteering with that since the 1990s, as she mentioned. <laughs> and then we've encountered each other and became coordinators and partners in every peace adventure that you could find. And I have been, I yes. yes. Now, thank you. Listen, there Yes. Uh, oh. Yeah. I can hear them in your microphone. Oh. 
Yeah. Oh, maybe it's the oh, that wouldn't move around. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Got it. Now you talked about interesting little facts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. The one little fact that my inspiration. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that is Harry yes. Truman. Yes, absolutely. Um, as we began ex celebrating Nagasaki, which is a forgotten celebration, because all the community remembers Hiroshima because that's first, and then all of a sudden this nobody thinks about Nagasaki. So we were really thrilled that we were the ones to carry that torch, and then in conversation, then Marsha said, "Look what I found." And historically, you know, so August sixth, uh, Truman bombs. Hiroshima, and that's devastating to the world. Never again, never again. Then on August 8th, the president signs that charter. She talks about the United Nations, and wow, we're going to go to peace. And then, unbeknownst to the world, he bombs Nagasaki. And that shattered many people's hopes. And um, but So we try to embrace the, the United Nations. Existed in 1945, but you know, President Truman took her one more step to continue the war. Uh, <laughs> it, it is astounding. Yes. Yes. And when I tell that story, most people say, oh, that didn't happen. Yeah. I don't believe that. Yeah. Yes. I've had lots of people that go have to go Google right. August Absolutely. 8 to see what happened. Yeah. 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 Now, Absolutely. of course, because some of it is Japan time and some of it is American time, Sometimes it reads August 9, mm, that, mm. that the bombing and the signing are on the same day. Ah, yes, yes, yes. So it had, you have to decide. Mm -hmm. um, it, it sounds more dramatic than 8th and 9th. Ninth. Ninth. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I've often wondered, because mm. he came late to the Manhattan Project, mm. I often wonder if it had already been planned even before he came, you know, mm -hmm. and it, it was already in place. The uh, bomb was already in Tinian, and the plane was already taken off when he signed. So I've, I'm not making excuses for mm -hmm. him. I just mm -hmm. wonder if mm -hmm. he even knew. Mm. I, I think as president, he had some knowledge, but, you know, not, not actually realizing what devastation was going to cause. But... Um, Dr. Glenn Page, who did research later on, um, interviewed President Truman and, um, you know, asked, like, about his, how, how conscionable was it to have, you know, known that you had killed hundreds of thousands of people. And he was shocked by the response because he said that he slept well every night because it, it, it like, it, it ended uh, the travesty of the war. So, you know, he, he never regretted his, his move. Well, but the Japanese sued for peace, whatever. That's a strange f phrase, but mm. that's the legal phrase. Oh. They mm -hmm. sued for peace after the firebombing of Tokyo in May. We're in August. <laughs> you know, so mm -hmm. ending the war, they could have ended the war when the Japanese asked for it. Mm -hmm. Was that, could we not have ended the war? Earlier? Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. sure. So the reason I'm saying that is mm -hmm. that was the plan we are going to bomb whether, no matter what, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Because all of to move that bomb, two bombs, from uh, the mainland right. on the ship across the island to Tinian. Mm -hmm. And for anybody that doesn't know where Tinian is, it's one of those little islands next to Guam and Saipan. There's Guam, Saipan, Tinian, and Rota. So, to move that mm. takes a lot of people, a lot of bombs, a lot of ships mm. and airplanes to do that. So it's not like it was a minute's notice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's why I wonder if it had already been in place. And it was, I don't know. I'm yeah, just, yeah, yeah, it's a speculation. Just looking at the, the logistics of this thing. Right. So, when we, we go to break, mm -hmm. we have a minute, we go to break. And then I want to talk about the sunflower. Oh, yes. Sounds okay. okay. Great. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness.
You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, which streams live on thinktechhawaii.com, uploads to YouTube, and broadcasts on cable OC16 and Alelo 54. Great content for Hawaii from Think Tech. Sounds like scuba divers are the poor man's astronaut. At Dive Heart, we believe that to be true. We say forget the moon. Dive Heart can help children, adults, and veterans of all abilities escape gravity right here on Earth. Search diveheart.org and imagine the possibilities in your life. We're back, oh. and I'm talking with my dear friend, Joanne Tachibana. Um, one of those interesting little moments in our history. We were part of the crowd, part of the, <laughs> for the film, uh, First Battle, <laughs> which was a long time ago, <laughs> and I was the old Hawaiian tutu with the straw hat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And Joanne, of course, is <laughs> the pretty Japanese oh, yeah. woman. <laughs> and that was one of those those moments. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now we um, see. I've got on my sunflower here. Tell us about the history, the the reason that we use mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. commemorate the, the sunflower along with oh, Nagasaki. Right. Well, thank you. Yes, we've been, it was um, SGI Buddhist, um, the president, Daisaku Ikeda, um, you know, always talked about anti-nuclear things because his, his teacher talked about that. And, they, and David Krieger is the <coughs> Nuclear Foundation president, and they collaborated together and um, put, she was hope. And, uh, and when we got this, when I got the book, it talked about what the importance of sunflowers were. It was very symbolic because um, sunflowers, at the end of World War II, um, they, they scattered sunflower seeds into the earth that was all devastated by nuclear devastation. And because sunflowers detoxes the ground, that, and so it's so amazing. And just saying that, it gives me chicken skin because and the sunflowers gave hope. And that's why the book was called Choose Hope. So since then, we have used sunflowers as symbols of hope in anti-nuclear war. So that's been, that's why. And we gave, today at City Council, we gave them sunflower bookmarks yes. to symbolize our work. Oh, mm -hmm. this is an open hand. Okay. Can we, can we see this? I, I don't know. Yeah, this is not the right way. Is that okay? I can't tell. But anyway, it tells me, but this is for you. It tells oh, me thank you. Of this. Oh, beautiful. Yes, thank you. Yes, two so. Thank yeah. Yes. Can I just read it? Read it. Read? Oh, read it. Oh, I'm sorry. The sunflower. Quote, sunflowers instead of missiles in the soil would ensure peace for the future generations. U.S. Secretary of Defense William Perry. Quote, sunflowers symbolize a world free of nuclear weapons. After Ukraine gave up its last nuclear warhead, the defense ministers of the United States, Russia, and Ukraine met on a former Ukrainian missile base on June 4, 1996. They celebrated by scattering sunflower seeds and planting sunflowers, which can remove toxins, including nuclear waste, from soil and water. Taken from the book entitled Choose Hope by David Krieger and Dr. Daisaku Ikeda. Thank you. So what we need to do is to buy sunflower seeds yes. and take them out to Barbara's Point mm -hmm. where it is so polluted. Or is it? Okay. Yes. Spread the sunflowers. You right. see it's so polluted out there. When the military moved out, mm -hmm. they left it. Didn't, didn't, didn't take care of it. Uh -huh. They just left it polluted. So. But that's um, maybe a project that's we can a take project up. Yeah. We can take care. We okay. Can plant and and sunflowers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let's. 
we'll make it our project. Our project. Right. Maybe this and this is. Yes, yes. We, today we, began, we talked to the Council General about planning now. It's a 72nd anniversary, so we're planning now for the 75th. So I think this project will have blooming sunflowers. It'll yes. be wonderful. Well, well that's yes, very hopeful. Yes, that's I great. Yes. <laughs> we had the Council General of Japan this morning at the ceremony at the City Council, which was lovely. And the City Council honored us for all those years of work with the bell and the fact that this is the 72nd commemoration <laughs> of the bombing. And it's one of those things that as tragic as it is, as horrible as it is, we must, we must keep remembering. Mm -hmm. We must talk about it. Uh, I'm sorry that we can't have music because of the copyright issues. Oh. <laughs> but when I was in Nagasaki for August 9th, um, everywhere we went, the streets were full and you could hear the music, the bells of Nagasaki. Oh, yes. Everywhere. And it just fills the streets just, just so lovely. Mm. So um, every year when yes. we celebrate, we yes. always have the music, the bells of Nagasaki. And with the Royal Hawaiian Band. With the Royal Hawaiian Band. Yes. Absolutely. So, oh well. So we'll plan we'll, for that. We'll plan for that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll plan for that. Yes. Well, yes. we're, we're going to grow sunflowers in the neighborhoods and down there. And uh, oh, that that sounds wonderful. I think um, the council general will be really delighted that we're making we're making plans already. So is he going to leave us? Well, he said that you know they give two year terms. So his two years is coming up, but sometimes they extend it to the third. And when we were talking with Bishop, we thought we could, if he's gone, then we should invite him to come. come. And this is his idea, yeah. yes. <laughs> so he was delighted at that, at that, at that thought, so yes. And yes. He's, and he's been very involved. Um, the, the Council General, when he arrived two years ago, it was a few days before our celebration of the Nagasaki Bell at City Hall. And he came down and he, immediately jumped in and you know he was so delighted about the fact that we were remembering Nagasaki because not many places uh, commemorate Nagasaki it's, it's, it's one of the forgotten cele forgotten celebrations so when um, you know they make all kind of excuses about mm -hmm. the cloudy and the, there was another site and all mm -hmm. that kind of nonsense <laughs> when we were in Nagasaki in fact the Hibakusha invited me First class, they gave me his oh. peace prize. Oh, yeah. beautiful! While we were there at Ground Zero, and I'm turning around looking at Ground Zero, you know, yeah, thrilled to death to be there. And in the background, mm -hmm. I could see across the river this huge sign that said Mitsubishi. Wow! And then I thought, oh, so. this wasn't only about this. This was not a, a second thought. This was planned mm -hmm. because Mitsubishi was building ships and planes like a, and trucks and everything. Like a Japanese. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, okay, I get it. <laughs> I understand. There's a new connection, yeah, there, there economic, is, connection. military. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's, it is a wonderful city, a beautiful city. Mm -hmm. For anybody that doesn't know about tonight, go home and read Madam Butterfly, or play the music, or go to YouTube, because that is where Madam Butterfly takes place. Uh -huh. This beautiful woman, Japanese woman, falls in love naturally yes. with a sailor. <laughs> what can I say? He was, he was a, a lieutenant, mm -hmm. and his ship was the Abraham Lincoln, can you imagine? And so I, anyway, you gotta go s uh, take YouTube or mm -hmm. or Netflix or whatever mm -hmm. and watch it, and you get to see and get a sense of the, the time. The, the, and that was in 1900. Mm -hmm. And you're like, well, were they telling us something mm -hmm. that that the United States arrives on the Abraham Lincoln, mm -hmm. and then of course, now we're not gonna spoil it. Mm -hmm. By telling you the ending. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <Yeah. Yeah. laughs> We're not going to tell you the ending. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But 
that is what Nagasaki was mainly known for, mm -hmm. was the opera, Madame yeah. Butterfly. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. where it came onto the scene, and maybe that, maybe, just maybe, maybe mm -hmm. that's so pretty. Mm -hmm. The music is so lovely that people don't want to think about the bombing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm making this mm -hmm. up. Oh, forget well, it. <laughs> you know, um, when you talk about bombing of Japan, some, I know some young people questioned it, said, why didn't we ever bomb Germany when, when they were doing so many cruel things to the Jewish people? So it always raises a question about American choices of, you know, of why we did Asia rather than in Europe, you know? So. Well, the excuse is the bomb wasn't ready. That, <laughs> that's the excuse. But, now this, the whole thing is very racist. Mm -hmm. But our language is racist. Mm -hmm. When we talk about the war in Europe, it's always Hitler. Mm. Always Hitler. Not the German people. It's Hitler. Right. When we talk about the war in the Pacific, yeah. it's Japanese. The Japanese. You know Yoshie. Mm -hmm. She talks about how horrible it was being a child and being Japanese, yeah. even though she's born here, mm -hmm. being a child. Uh, in Hawaii mm -hmm. and the horrors she went through as a Japanese child. Right. So it was all the language. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, uh, Japan, the German prisoners of war could go into the officers club on base where they were prisoners of war, but the black pilots couldn't. Mm -hmm. So it's all, yes, yes right across the, the board it was all racist. And so that is the answer. <laughs> the, an the, the technical answer is the bomb wasn't ready. Right. That oh, yeah. Hitler gave up yeah. too soon or whatever. Yeah. You know, they make yeah. excuses yeah. for it. So we really don't want history to keep repeating itself. But yeah, that was quite a devastating, the choices they made. So. Well, Joanne, mm -hmm. it's been a pleasure spending time with you, as always. <laughs> Let's hope we don't have to wait until next year to do this. <laughs> oh, yes. And Thank every you. year, every August 9th. Yes, yes. absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Thank you again for spending the time with me. Well, it's a pleasure. And as always, you know, I, I walk the path of peace because you're one of my mentors and models. Thank, Thank you, you, darling. I love her. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>